you're not relying on any sort of substance, but you are actually using the power of your own oxygen and CO2 ratios to induce these non-ordinary states of consciousness, having out-of-body experiences, speaking to deceased loved ones. I mean, that is crazy that we have the ability to do that on our own just by getting high off our own supply. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too, will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another amazing episode of It's All Magic. How are you doing today? How is your body? How is your mind? How is your spirit? I can definitely share that I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. I recently got back from a really incredible weekend trip to LA where I was visiting one of my best friends and attending a very special event that I will be discussing today. But it was definitely one of those whirlwind weekends where, you know, I wasn't sleeping great in this foreign bed. I was so excited to be with my friend. We were doing so many different activities. I had this emotionally exhausting event that I will be sharing with you and I'm now just feeling the effects and yet because I took a couple days off I'm now having to catch up so (laughs) it's kind of that tough situation of I had a blast and now I'm exhausted from the blast and I have a lot of stuff to do so I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling that way but no matter how you're feeling I hope that you're just taking it with a grain of salt, recognizing that it's temporary, this too shall pass. So whether you're having the best day of your life or it's a bit of a tough week, know that you are not alone. Someone in the world is feeling the exact same way as you are right now, and this too shall pass. (laughs) So before I dive into today's episode where I share about a really transformational life shifting event that I attended in LA. I want to open up with a little bit of breath work as always. And this is actually extremely timely because the event that I will be sharing with you today was actually a breath work event. So in order to kind of get into that time and space again, mentally and emotionally for me, I want to tap into the power of breath and allow you the same opportunity. So today I want us to do box breathing or equal ratio breath. I believe we've done this before on the podcast, but in case you are a new listener or if somehow my memory deceives me and we have not done this breathing pattern before, just know a couple of things. This breathing pattern is super beginner friendly. It's very simple, but it's a great way to balance your body and bring yourself back into harmony. So if you've been feeling a little bit off kilter, if you've been feeling a little too stressed, a little tired, whatever it may be towards any extreme, this will bring your body right back to center. This breathing practice is so powerful that it's actually taught in boot camp for U.S. Navy SEALs for them to utilize this practice during times of high stress. So whenever they have to bring themselves back to center and really focus and kind of get back in the zone, they practice this breathing pattern. So 
It's called box breathing or equal ratio breath because we are going to essentially be drawing a box with our breathing. I will explain. So we will breathe in and out of the nose. We'll breathe in for a count of five, hold at the top for a count of five, breathe out through the nose for a count of five, hold at the bottom for a count of five. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you might see I'm literally drawing a box with my finger, going up with that inhale to the side for that hold, down for the exhale and to the side for that hold. So if you have the opportunity to close your eyes, I invite you to do so. We're going to just do three rounds today to keep it really simple, but I hope that this gives you a little taste of the harmony you, you might be craving so that you can practice it more later on your own time. So closing down the eyes, if you have the opportunity, let's go ahead and take one full breath together before we begin box breathing. So breathing in through the nose, filling up all the way. And open mouth, let this one out. Ah. <sighs> Beautiful. And begin your count of five. Inhale through the nose. Hold at the top. Exhale through the nose. Hold at the bottom. Inhale through the nose. Hold at the top. Exhale through the nose. Hold at the bottom. And last round, inhale through the nose. Hold at the top. Exhale through the nose. Hold at the bottom. One last cleansing breath. Just fully inhale through the nose, filling up all the way. And open mouth. Release this one. <sighs> Gorgeous as always. You can once again flutter open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. I hope that just by taking those few deep breaths, you are a little bit more aware of how you are doing. I asked you at the beginning of this episode, how's your body? How's your mind? How's your spirit? And you might not have known. I feel like we often are either numb or just operating on autopilot to the point where we don't really know how we're feeling. But the second we take a second to sit in silence and breathe a little bit, it brings forth that awareness of how we're actually doing. So I was feeling a little tired before and now I'm about ready for a nap. <laughs> so if I lived in the perfect world, which I am trying to craft for myself as we speak, I would take a nap after this. So maybe I'll allow myself even an hour of some downtime because I could definitely use it. And I'm sure I'm not alone. And before we dive into the event that I'm sharing with you today, I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer that if you enjoy the breath work at the beginning of these videos and you want to learn even more techniques, ones that I might not be sharing on this podcast, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Devin Rochelle Hine. So D-E-V-O-N-R-O-C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, and then last name H-E-Y-N. I tell you to subscribe there because I plan on releasing some breathwork videos soon, if not already by the time you listen to this. So if you want to be able to practice these breathing patterns on your own time, unattached from this podcast, then you'll definitely want to check out the breathwork videos I have coming there soon. So with all of that behind us, I can finally share more about the amazing event that I attended this weekend. I attended the Awaken Breathwork event in Los Angeles, California. If you are not aware of the breathwork group Awaken, it's not spelled the way you think it is. It's spelled O-W-A-K-E-N. The reason why I wanted to highlight that is because the O symbolizes oxygen, you're awakening through oxygen. They've actually changed their name to Awaken, but when I first 
got to experience the magic of their breathwork facilitation, it was actually back in 2019 and they were called the O2 Awakening, so the Oxygen Awakening. The reason why they're called the O2 Awakening or Awaken Breathwork is because they facilitate these events using a form of breathwork called Conscious Connected Breathing. When you do conscious connected breathing, it actually helps to shift your body and mind into non-ordinary states of consciousness where you can tap into subconscious beliefs, trauma, triggers, fears, grief, etc. Bring them to your conscious awareness and then work through them and release them. So these breathing events are really emotionally intense. I hope that will come through by the end of this episode, but they are transformational and healing beyond words. Awaken Breathwork was founded by two amazing souls, Hella Weston and Lucas Mack. I've actually talked about Hella on this podcast before. This is crazy. This hadn't even occurred to me until this morning when I was just going through some of my notes and prepping for the episode. But I realized I talked about Hella in maybe my first or second podcast episode because she is indirectly the reason why I finally started this podcast. She's the one, you might remember the story. She's the one that I had heard on another podcast talking about intuition and that if you hear the same intuitive message more than once and you don't listen to it, you're nuts. You're an idiot. (laughs) And at that point, I had gotten the intuitive message to start a podcast so many different times. And I suppose it was just the fear the procrastination holding me back and the second I heard that podcast I went home and I said to Cal it's time I'm starting the podcast so thank you Hella if you ever listen to this episode I really am so grateful that you gave me that final nudge I needed and then by me sharing your message on this episode or on this podcast I know that I have since given the shove or the nudge to others who needed it as well So thank you. But Hele and Lucas are two incredible souls. They started Awaken Breathwork, or back then it was the O2 Awakening back in 2017. So they've been doing this for quite a few years at this point in time. And they have facilitated breathwork events all over the globe. They also have breathwork facilitator trainings. They have YouTube videos where they share their awaken breath work that you can do every single day. It's just this five minute daily practice that is incredibly powerful to help you tap into your intuition and receive the clarity and messages that you might be seeking. So I cannot recommend them enough. But I felt so honored to get to go to this event after So many years of wanting to because back in 2019, I actually got to experience their magic. I was on a wellness retreat in Bali, Indonesia, and they were honestly the cherry on top of the retreat. At the time, I didn't even know much about breath work. I had done some basic pranayama, some basic breath work in yoga classes and even my own yoga teacher training, but this was a form of breath work that I had never heard of or tapped into. So it blew my freaking mind. So they came to facilitate the breath work. They first explained some of the science behind it, the fact that This form of conscious connected breathing helps you to actually tap into your sympathetic nervous system, which is that stress response, that fight or flight or freeze response. And by tapping into your sympathetic nervous system, you can actually retrieve some of those past stresses, traumas, triggers, fears, grief, etc. that you have buried down deep because we all do it. And by bringing it to the surface, you can work through it and release it. And they had explained, or I've also since heard in many other breathwork trainings that I've done, that if you look around at animals in the wild, when they endure some sort of trauma or stressor, their bodies will actually shake. And this often happens to people in car crashes. I know that my mom was once in a car accident and she said that her body shook for a little bit afterwards. We've all probably experienced some of some form of this. But for most of us who live in a society that says that you cannot shake in public at random times, 
we push that stress down. And when the animals do it in the wild, let's say a prey animal has just been chased by a predator and they got away, that animal will shake until that stress has truly left their body and then it's not buried down deep. They won't have to relive that experience in therapy 15 years down the road because they've already released it in the moment. But we as humans don't do that. So we have so much just stored up in our body tissues. And by accessing this breath, tapping into that sympathetic nervous system, you can bring that to the surface and then let it go. So before I explain my own experience, first the one that I had in Bali and then the one that I had a few days ago in 2024, I wanted to briefly touch on Hella and Lucas's stories. Granted, they tell them far better than I can, so I hope to have them on the podcast soon so that they can share from their own hearts. But I wanted to share because I feel like their stories are a really powerful example of how this breathwork can truly transform a life. So Hella and Lucas both grew up in New Zealand. Hella grew up with both of her parents being DJs and coming with that kind of lifestyle, they both struggled with mental health issues and a lot of drug abuse issues. And so Hella grew up surrounded by that all the time to the point where she had to become an adult, almost like the parent figure, a little bit too young, feeling like she had to take care of her parents. And with that came a lot of sensitivity. She was a really sensitive child, but she had to kind of learn how to push that down and ignore it and not focus on it just so that she could take care of her parents and be that adult that they needed her to be, even at a young age. She also explained that her father has always been very hypercritical of her and judgmental of her choices and her values. And so it's just been a constant struggle of not feeling like she was enough and in a way not getting to fully be a child. And so by the time she was in her teenage years, I mean, she had started to struggle with severe mental health issues herself. There were days where she felt like she just couldn't get out of bed. She had this crippling depression and anxiety. And again, just this what some might call an oversensitivity. I actually believe her sensitivity is one of her superpowers, which she would probably in the present day agree with. But at the time, it was really difficult. So that was her story that I will get back to in just a moment. But I want to bring Lucas into the story. I'll also mention that Lucas and Hella are dating. They've been together for 17 years. So they lived through a lot of these difficult years together and since have moved into a completely different life as a team. So Lucas grew up with his mom and his dad, and his dad committed suicide when Lucas was only seven years old. And because Lucas's mom was grieving so much, Lucas felt like he had to be strong for her. So he pushed down his grief as a seven-year-old child and refused to feel it. He had to just keep marching forward. And I'm sure there are some, some of you out there right now that can resonate with that. You might be able to resonate with both stories, having to grow up before you were really ready, being really sensitive in a world that doesn't cater to that, feeling like you have to push down your grief, push down your emotions just to get through the day and be strong enough. So that was Lucas's struggle. And so through their experiences, they both had a lot of not enoughness, if you will. They both felt like they just weren't good enough. And one day in their journey, once Hella especially had started getting a little bit into meditation and all of the self-help stuff, she heard about this breathwork class going on. And she had no idea what breathwork was, but for some reason she intuitively felt called to go. And so she said to her boyfriend, Lucas, she said, Lucas, we're going to this breathwork class. And he said, are you crazy? I know how to breathe. I'm not going to some stupid breathwork class. Like, what is that? And she said, I don't know, but we have to go. And, you know, he kept refusing. And she was like, Lucas, we're going to the dang breathwork class. <laughs> so they finally went to the breathwork class and they were in for a ride. 
They had no idea of what to expect. And Hella even said at this event a few days ago that that facilitator barely even explained what they were about to get into. So they truly went in completely blind to this highly emotional, sometimes psychedelic experience. So for Hella's experience, about 10, 15 minutes into it, she said she started to literally float above her body. She could look down at herself. She felt like she was floating in the cosmos and she received a lot of healing messages, things about, yes, she is enough. You are good enough. You are exactly as you're meant to be and you are perfect the way you are. And so that was healing for her on so many levels. Saying it through my words now, it doesn't have the same weight as when you actually feel it in a breathwork event. And I hope to share some of my own experience so that you can feel a little bit more of that weight hearing from my own heart. But when Hello was sharing her story, she said that it was beyond transformational, that it was truly the words she always needed to hear. So while she was having this whole out-of-body experience, Lucas was right by her side having his unique experience where he actually got to communicate with his deceased father and he saw his father come to him and his father looked directly at Lucas and said you are enough my son you've always been enough my son and Lucas is sobbing during this breathwork event which he also said he was never a crier I mean from the time he was seven and his father died he pushed down that grief so he had a lot of walls and barriers up around the ability to cry he never released any sort of emotion and yet 10 minutes into this breathwork experience he is wailing like a child and Hella had a similar experience where she is sobbing and just releasing years and years of pent up emotion So they both had this incredible experience. They left the breathwork event feeling like, oh my gosh, (laughs) we had no idea what was in store for us. We're not done with this journey. There's a lot of healing to be done and something about this feels right for us. Now, granted, Hella said that she didn't even feel ready to do another breathwork ceremony for a while because she then knew the power that it had to tap into deeply uncomfortable memories and emotions. And so she felt like she had to gather more of her toolkit, her emotional support system before she could endure that again. And I can say, as someone who's done a few of these at this point, she was absolutely right. You have to be in the right state of mind, but there are also these incredible studies of this form of breath work helping to heal people with the darkest of mental health issues. This form of breathing helps to tap into the darkest, deepest parts of our subconscious psyche and really heal it and work through it in ways that we might not be able to when we are consciously engaging in something like talk therapy. So for people that are struggling deeply, conscious connected breath work is an incredibly healing tool. And beyond the breath work, there's one other tool that Lucas and Hele use every single time they lead an event that I think is equally as transformational. So they have the conscious connected breath work, which helps to really carry the event and bring us deep into that psyche. But then they and their other facilitators that they bring to these events use a technique called EFT, emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as tapping. If any of you are in therapy, you might have experienced this technique. It's very, very popular and common amongst therapists these days because it has been proven to also work on the deepest, darkest mental health issues. In a 2013 study, for example, they had a group of veterans with extreme PTSD go through this study. Some of them got to experience EFT, so emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as tapping, and others did not. By the end of the month, the veterans with PTSD that had experienced the tapping, over 50% of them no longer were diagnosed with PTSD. 
they had actually released their symptoms and experience of PTSD. It had healed them that strongly. So I can attest to the fact that through my own experience, this tapping thing is the real work. The way the tapping works, this is my rudimentary understanding at least, is that it uses the same meridian hotspots, so kind of the energy channels throughout your body that acupuncture relies on. So both acupuncture and tapping are these ancient Chinese medicinal techniques, and in both cases, you are putting pressure on these energy channels, these meridians throughout your body to help with the energy flow. Because it's believed that as energy gets stuck in our body, that actually contributes to the dark, heavy, challenging emotions that we experience. And as you release the pressure or put down pressure to change the flow of that energy, it completely changes your experience. And again, I can attest to the fact that it works. So back in 2019, when I was in Bali, and these two amazing souls, Hella and Lucas, facilitated the breathwork experience. The way it worked then and the way it worked a few days ago, five years later, is that you go on about an hour-long breathwork journey, as they explain. So in the beginning, they break down some of the science. They give you some disclaimers of what you might experience because it can be really weird. Some people feel a little lightheaded. Some people feel tingling in their hands and their feet because the form of breathwork that I've been talking about, conscious connected breathwork, is actually a form of controlled over breathing. I say controlled because you are conscious the whole time. You're aware. And it's over breathing because in a way it's a form of hyperventilation, although hyperventilation is not controlled. So that's why I'm saying it is controlled over breathing. And again, the reason why you're over breathing is partially to help stimulate that sympathetic stressed out nervous system to tap into those emotions and memories. But also by doing this over breathing, you actually release a little too much CO2 from your body and it causes your blood vessels to shrink up, to narrow, and it decreases blood circulation throughout your body, especially to your brain. And the way that it changes your brain is fascinating. Again, I will definitely have Hella or, or Lucas or both on the podcast to better explain this, but from what I myself have learned is that you are essentially decreasing blood flow to the areas of the brain that are super conscious, are conscious of self, conscious of the passage of time, things that essentially keep you grounded in the here and the now on this earth. And instead, what happens is lots of -of out-of-body experiences, lots of release of trauma and a sense of deep peace and relaxation by the end almost psychedelic hallucinatory experiences, uh, conversations with deceased loved ones, and much, much more. So people have had all sorts of different experiences when doing this form of breathing. And I myself have had some of the most powerful hours of my life while doing this breathing pattern as well. So that paired with the tapping at these events gives you an experience unlike any other. So back in 2019, again, they had explained all of this and then they had us lay down on our yoga mats. You could put an eye mask on, a blanket, get comfortable, and they had us start the breathing. And you do the breathing for about an hour. So I'll just share very quickly or show very quickly what the breathing looks like. So the whole time, You're breathing in and out of your mouth, which you don't want to do in your normal day-to-day life. You typically want to breathe in and out of your nose, which helps keep your parasympathetic nervous system, that relaxation response turned on. But in this specific situation, because you are consciously trying to induce your controlled over breathing to induce these non-ordinary states, you have to breathe in and out of your mouth. So it looks and sounds like this. So you might have noticed 
there's no pause between my inhale and my exhale. That's why it's called conscious connected breath because it's truly this cycle. You inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And that's how you end up quote unquote over breathing. So when I had laid down in 2019 to start the breathing, my first thoughts were, this is so freaking hard, (laughs) which is true. They even warn you at the beginning of the events that it's called breath work for a reason. You have to put in the work and then at a certain point in these journeys, you get over kind of that conscious hump and move into a deeper state of consciousness where your body takes over the breathing for you and you can start to drift and float a little bit. But in the beginning, it is hard work. And the reason why is because your body starts telling you, enough dude, I've had enough oxygen, I've let go of enough CO2, stop breathing. And that can actually happen. So in my experience in 2019, when I had started doing the breath work, I found myself, I'm barely even aware of this, I would stop breathing because I had enough oxygen and then it would be, I don't know, maybe a minute later, I have no idea what the passage of time looked like, but I would then start breathing again and I would remember, oh, I'm not breathing. And at one point, I had rolled over onto my side, whereas most of us are just laying flat on our backs. So I'd rolled over onto my left side, curled up in this little fetal position. And again, I would just stop breathing and I would just lay there in this little ball. And at one point, Lucas had come over and I think he he spoke to me a little. He coached me through it and he started tapping. I believe he started tapping somewhere on my chest or my collarbone. I can't quite remember. And as soon as he started tapping, I started sobbing. Something about him tapping into that energy meridian and me feeling that physical human touch while having someone speak to me, coach me through it, talk to me, be there for me. It was this great release, this outpouring of emotion that I didn't even know was stored way down deep. And so he's there for me as I'm sobbing and sobbing. And finally, he gets to a point where he is able to kind of roll me over onto my back because they typically want you on your back. When you roll onto your side, that's just one of many different methods your body has to protect yourself. As you start sensing quote unquote danger or you're getting close to those stored traumas or stressors, your body will do anything to protect itself. And so for me, by turning onto my side, curling up into this little protective fetal position and stopping breathing, I was stopping the journey for myself. And I wasn't even conscious of it, but that's what my body was doing. And so Lucas helped me say, hey, keep breathing in, out, in, out, keep going deeper. He started tapping and he helped me through it. And it ended up being such an incredible experience because once he had gotten me on my back and helped me to keep breathing and start releasing. And I think once he got me to that point where I was having this emotional release, it's like I wasn't as afraid to tap into that anymore. But I suppose subconsciously before he got to me, I was terrified of it, which is why I'd stopped breathing. So at that point, for the rest of the journey, I don't even know how long it was, but I was sobbing, sobbing. And that's very common. Most people in these breathwork events are either sobbing, some are screaming, crying out, laughing. It's all forms of stored emotions that we have not let ourselves witness or tap into. And so for me personally, I was crying about all sorts of things. And it's not always sad tears as well. I remember by the end of that experience, and it was kind of similar to the experience I had this time, I was almost laughing Tears of joy, tears of release, of relaxation, of self-assurance and confidence. And it was the wildest thing. But I had had to go through the full trajectory, the full journey of deep sadness and grief to come out on the other side to lightness and laughter. And at the end of my experience, I remember having this really strong vision that was absolutely a message for me. I can't remember all the details of the breathwork experience five years later, but this I do remember. 
And it was that I had a vision of the Teletubby sun baby or baby sun. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you can picture it too. In the show Teletubbies that I grew up watching, some of us did, there is a sun in the sky that literally has this giggling, laughing baby face in the sun. And the message I was receiving was, I am that Teletubby sun baby. <laughs> that I have the same warmth and brightness and joy, like unconditional joy in this lifetime and that it's a gift for me to be this Teletubby sun baby. And maybe that's why I started laugh crying because it felt so aligned, it resonated so deeply that that is what I see myself as and I just felt so content to be exactly that. But through that experience, I had also healed a lot of limiting beliefs, sadness, seeking approval for, from certain people, and so much. So that was such a transformational experience that all these years later, five years later, after I myself have done breathwork facilitation training and endless breathwork sessions, when I heard that there was going to be an Awaken Breathwork event in Los Angeles, I decided I'm getting on a plane and I'm going to this thing. So I attended a few days ago as I'm recording this and it was just so incredible. So what happened for me this time, I got comfortable, I laid on my back, I brought my blanket, sleeping eye mask, and I started the breathwork. And guess what? At first, again, it was really freaking hard. It's so uncomfortable. It's like you have to shut down all of your body's responses to say, keep breathing, keep going. And this time, instead of stopping breathing, my body chose a different response. I kept yawning. And by yawning, I would slow down my breath so that I essentially was hitting a threshold. I couldn't I couldn't go deeper because when we slow our breath, we help to turn off the sympathetic nervous system. We help to calm ourselves. And so I kept yawning. And when I say kept, I mean, probably in that first maybe 15, 20 minutes, I might have yawned 25 times, at least like an odd amount of times. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, am I just so tired? Is it going to ruin this event? And so I kept trying to breathe, kept trying to breathe. And finally, it occurred to me before we started this breathing, they had said, if you ever need help, you can raise your hand. And I was battling with myself in this moment. I was like, should I ask for help? Should I not ask for help? Should I ask for help? Should I not ask for help? And I eventually swallowed my pride and thought, I want to ask for help because I want to make the most of this experience. And I feel that my body is stopping me from going as deep as I'd like to go because my intention for this experience was to go into the deepest parts of myself. I'm always yearning to heal those limiting beliefs, to become aware of these unconscious ideas and beliefs that I have, to release toward traumas, stressors, fears, grief, and to come out the other side as my most free, light, vibrant self. And so when I kept yawning, I was kind of pissed at myself. Like, stop with the freaking yawning, Devin. And at that point in the experience, I could hear other people having an emotional release. And I was almost jealous. It was like I flew all the way down to Los Angeles for this event to have some sort of transformational experience. And I'm just yawning. I'm like half taking a nap. So anyway, I raised my hand and... None other than Hella Weston herself came crouching next to me, which was absolutely crazy because Hella and Lucas had brought, I want to say 11 or 13 different breathwork facilitators that they have personally trained. So I could have gotten anyone, but I got one of the two founders of Awaken Breathwork who are so talented beyond measure. And so Hella comes and crouches beside me 
I believe she touched my arm. So I picked up my eye mask and I looked at her and I said, I want to go deeper. I keep yawning. Can you help me? And she said, absolutely. And she said, you're yawning because your body is trying to stop you from going deeper. And she explained to me after the event, when I was sharing my experience in front of of everyone, when I talked about the yawning, she said it's called the dorsal vagal response. Essentially, the dorsal vagal response is when your body is encountering danger, some sort of fear of something you are about to embark on or endure, your body will shut down. The dorsal vagal response is the freeze response in that fight, flight, freeze, stress response. And oftentimes when you're in that dorsal vagal response, you get really tired, you yawn a lot, you start to just feel helpless. It's almost like you you give up. It's as if you're standing on a railroad track, seeing the train coming directly at you, and rather than jumping off the tracks, you freeze. You just like can't do anything. And that is a version of the dorsal vagal response. And so she'd explained that happens very frequently during these breathwork ceremonies where you don't want to tap into all of that untapped stuff. And so she gave me the brief version of that when I was actually in the breathwork as she's crouching next to me. And she said, at that point, I believe I was turned over on my side again, on my left side in the fetal position. And so she rolled me over and she said, do you mind if I sit you up? And I said, okay. And so she sat me up and she said, okay, start breathing again. And so I began the breath. (sighs) And she started tapping my lower middle back And within 0.5 milliseconds, I started bawling, literally bawling. And I don't know if that has to do with the dorsal vagal response, because of course the dorsal is the backside. So maybe that's why she chose that particular meridian point or energy field. But she started tapping my middle lower back and just saying what felt like very tailored words to me. I don't know how she knew that this is what I needed, but it was so aligned. She was saying, you can be both fiery and gentle, fiery and gentle. You need to be the woman that your inner child needs you to be, fiery and gentle, strong and soft. And something about those words felt so personalized for me and so personal like I can be this big bold bright risk-taking Leo woman with a microphone in hand wanting to take on the world and spread light and love everywhere she goes but I can also be soft and nurturing with myself and be kind to myself give myself the sense of approval that I'm often seeking from those around me knowing that I myself am enough. I have my back. I am strong and soft. And something about her words just had me sobbing, (laughs) like absolutely sobbing. And so she stayed there, I mean, continuing to tap on my back as she's speaking these words to me, keep breathing, fiery and gentle, keep breathing. And after, I don't even know how long it was, I would say minutes She came behind me and at that point I had placed my left hand on my heart, just not even thinking. I wasn't aware of this, but I suppose that was almost a form of self-protection, self-nurturing as I was going through this emotional response. She sat behind me and she placed her hand on my hand and kept tapping my back with her other hand. And she just said, you were loved, you were supported, you were loved, you were supported. And that somehow felt like the medicine for my inner child that all of our inner children often feel alone or unsupported or unloved or like we're not enough and hearing those words having this stranger have her hand over my hand on my heart and having her sit behind me like really protecting me holding me nurturing me I started wailing like If I thought I was sobbing before, this was unreal. It's like I'm coughing on my own sobs. I can barely breathe. And yet through it, I'm still continuing to do my overbreathing, my conscious connected breath. And so 
I did that for a while with her continuing right by my side, you know, holding me, tapping on me. And finally, after I had kind of released most of it, she had me lay back down and she got near my feet and she just continued to kind of press into my feet, into my ankles to kind of ground my system, my nervous system again. And at that point, probably because I had let go of a lot of the sadness, kind of the darkness, I once again moved into the light side of the journey. And after I had had all of these thoughts about how I can be exactly the woman I need myself to be, because that was something else she said, that I can be everything my inner child needed and everything my future self needs me to be, that I can be strong and soft, fiery and gentle. I had had all these thoughts of independence and just being able to do it on my own. And then by the end of the journey, I started silently sobbing tears of love and gratitude for Cal, my husband, just knowing that I have been granted the greatest gift by having him as my best friend, my mate, my partner for life, and that he will support me in all the ways I need him to, and that he will travel the world with me and support my dreams of starting a podcast and nurture me on the days that I am soft and pick me up on the days where I am fiery and I've burned out. He will be there for the whole journey each and every day and he's simply the best life partner I could have ever wished for or imagined. And so as I was picturing him, And I was picturing me just hugging him, especially being apart from him for the weekend in L.A. And these silent tears of love and gratitude just started falling down my face. And I could not wipe the smile off of my face. So I had truly this transformational experience of releasing the need for approval from those around me, especially those around me that I can't always get that approval from being okay with that recognizing that I am all I need, that I can continue to make decisions from my own gut, my own intuitive guidance system, my own values, that I will be okay. I am fiery and gentle, soft and strong. And I also have this life partner. So I'm never actually alone. And it was simply a beautiful, beautiful experience. And by the time the breathing had actually ended, we were guided to start breathing in and out of our nose again. Lucas up front started to guide us into a visualization meditation. And he said, I want you to envision yourself in a nature scene. And at that point, I pictured myself in a jungle. And if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you'll know that I had a past life regression episode recently where we were also guided to visualize ourselves in a garden and I pictured a jungle. And it's so funny. I've not really spent time in jungles before. I'm not from a jungle. We don't even really have that in my home country. And yet something about it, I guess my soul feels really comfortable there, which is also funny because I've shared on this podcast that Cal and I will be moving at least temporarily to Thailand in a few short months. And Thailand has tons of jungles. So If you don't think that's synchronistic, I don't know what is. So anyway, I pictured myself in this jungle and it was so beautiful. And every time I picture myself in a jungle, it's so vibrant and colorful and buzzing with life and animals. And so I'm walking through the jungle and eventually he guided us to a door. And he said, when you open this door, you will meet your future self. And I want you to ask your future self for messages of guidance, clarity, whatever you may need right now. And it was so wild when I opened the door, I saw my future self, but she looked like me now. She looked like me in the present moment. More specifically, she looked exactly like how I looked filming a an episode that I recorded a few weeks ago about my past life regression experience. I was wearing this new top that I had gotten over the holidays, this brown tube top, and my hair was really wild. It had been in braids the day before, and so I had let it loose, and it was all wavy, 
and something about my energy that day or my outfit or my hair or something, I felt so me. It felt like I was wearing my soul on the outside. And so I felt really beautiful. And it wasn't because of what I was wearing. I mean, I wear all sorts of things all the time, but it was something about the energy I was embodying that day. And so when I opened this door in the meditation, I saw her. I saw myself from a matter of weeks ago. And yet this was meant to be my future self. And I almost looked at her in confusion. And in this meditation, she just gave me a hug. And she smiled and said, I'll see you in Thailand. And (laughs) I mean, it almost makes me giddy thinking about it. Like it's so just sweet and wholesome. So I gave her a hug and I said, okay, I'll see you in Thailand. And I started backing up through the door and she was waving goodbye to me. And then she shut the door and I was back in my jungle. And then we were guided to awaken and I came too. And so it was, yeah, oh my gosh, even now I have chills thinking about the experience. And I know that I've only just touched the surface of what these kinds of experiences can entail. I plan on doing a whole lot more breathwork experiences. I've done quite a few of these journeys at one point. One of the most powerful alongside these awakened breathwork journeys was last year. Last February, Cal and I did actually a psychedelic mushroom assisted breathwork journey and it was one of the most beautiful things we've ever done together as a couple we both had this massive emotional release I mean laying side by side and then we had gone to dinner afterwards and we shared what we had journaled about and we talked it out and we just felt so much love and gratitude for each other so I'm telling you if you feel like you could really use some sort of emotional release or work through grief you haven't been able to process or speak to a deceased loved one that's been gone some time or maybe not a lot of time that you really feel like you could communicate with. If any of those feel real, I want you to seek out this kind of breathwork experience. I mean, it's really powerful stuff. And as they say, you are quote unquote getting high off your own supply. So there's nothing external about this experience you're not relying on any sort of substance but you are actually using the power of your own oxygen and co2 ratios to induce these non-ordinary states of consciousness having out-of-body experiences speaking to deceased loved ones i mean that is crazy that we have the ability to do that on our own just by getting high off our own supply. So with that whole story now being told, I hope that you found a nugget of inspiration in here or that you are curious to now go and look up EFT technique, tapping, to learn a little bit about that and how it might be able to help you through anxiety, depression, PTSD, whatever you might struggle with. Or maybe you're ready to go look up a breathwork facilitation event. Whatever it is, let me know. I would really love to hear from you. You can follow me on my Instagram at It's All Magic Podcast or even my personal Instagram where I post a lot of wellness and spirituality tips all the time. You can follow me there at Devin underscore Rochelle underscore. So I hope to see you there and I'm really excited. I do also hope to have Hele and Lucas or at least one of them on the podcast soon and they can share the full depth of this work because again, I just scratched the surface and I want to make sure that I really do justice to this transformational technique. Please share this with a friend or family member who might enjoy hearing about these techniques or who is struggling with their mental health right now that could really use a little bit of breath work or tapping themselves. And with that, I already cannot wait to see you again next week. I love you. I adore you. I appreciate you. Okay, my friends. (laughs) Bye for now. Bye.